What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna tackle the protein synthesis argument. People are saying that you shouldn't do intermittent fasting and it doesn't work because of protein synthesis. And their argument is that higher meal frequency, which means eating more throughout the day, can trigger protein synthesis effectively in your body, thus protecting muscle and building muscle. But it's much more nuanced and complex than that. We're gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, first of all, what is protein synthesis? And specifically, muscle protein synthesis. Well, protein synthesis is when your body takes a lot of different compounds, a lot of different elements, and creates protein from those different elements. It isn't just protein, the macronutrient going into your body, because when it goes into your body, it actually turns into amino acids. Protein synthesis is your body creating protein within itself using the amino acids. It's a pretty complex system, but it is a transcription and translation system. And the reason is transcription because elements of your DNA is copied by something called the mRNA. And then it takes that information and through your body's cytoplasm, transfers it over and starts using the amino acids to build protein. And protein synthesis isn't only to build muscle, it's for so many other things. Now this video was made to help you understand what is exactly happening, not just making it black, and white. And there are some limitations, believe it or not, that intermittent fasting may place on protein synthesis, but it isn't as drastic as you may think. Those who are making videos on protein synthesis are making you believe that you will lose muscle when using intermittent fasting. But I would argue that that is not true. That is making it black and white. If you are not building muscle, you are automatically losing all of your muscle. In reality, you are always building and losing muscle throughout the day. The only thing that matters for building muscle is that at the end of the day, or at the end of the week, or at the end of the month, or at the end of the year, you are anabolically net positive versus being catabolically net positive, which means that you go through waves of being anabolic and catabolic, anabolic and catabolic throughout the day based on so many different elements. Being at a caloric deficit puts you in a more catabolic state. Strength training puts you in a more anabolic state. Eating proteins puts you in a more anabolic state. And throughout the day, you're constantly going up and down. But if at the end of the day, you are at zero, where you weren't more anabolic throughout the day than catabolic, or more catabolic throughout the day than anabolic, then for that specific day, you didn't lose any muscle. Your body is not just on hold saying, wait a second, I'm not getting a lot of meals coming in, we're just gonna break down muscle. It doesn't work like that. Doing strength training actually increases your anabolic state, which also increases protein synthesis, and that has nothing to do with consuming food. However, consuming food is very, very important. And the more important thing over everything else is how much food and protein is going into your body. Calories being incredibly important and protein being incredibly important. So if you're at a caloric surplus, that will be one piece of the puzzle to ensure that you're more anabolic at the end of the day than catabolic. If you're taking in adequate protein, which is about 0.7 grams, about 1.2 grams of protein per body weight, that would also ensure that you have more tools that allow you to be more anabolic than catabolic at the end of the day. Now, the reason that I say intermittent fasting in terms of this protein synthesis argument may have some limitations is because one of the tools that you can use to ensure your anabolic is meal frequency. Yes, believe it or not, meal frequency can help in aiding more of an anabolic day so that you're net positive when it comes to being anabolic. This is helping you gain muscle. So is intermittent fasting the best for building muscle? It might not be the best for building muscle, and if you're going to use intermittent fasting, you might wanna use a larger eating window, which is why I always suggest doing the 16-8 so that you can still get the health benefits that come with intermittent fasting, but give yourself more of an opportunity to get in more meals throughout the day to increase that frequency a little bit more. But this is for building muscle. When you are losing weight, it is a completely different ball game because you still have to be at a caloric deficit, which will be the main driver for being anabolic or catabolic. If you are at a negative energy 
balanced, which is at a caloric deficit, you will be more than likely losing weight and not building muscle. So at this point, does protein synthesis being positive even matter when your body's automatically putting itself in a catabolic state to lose weight? That's what they're not explaining to you. When the coin flips, when you're trying to actually lose body fat, because of course, no one's trying to lose muscle, people are trying to lose body fat. When the coin flips and you're actually trying to lose body fat, intermittent fasting becomes much better than meal frequency because meal frequency yes it's giving you enough amino acids and it's spreading it around for the protein synthesis aspect but because your calories are at a deficit that has way more power than just meal frequency way more power so it'll most likely put you catabolically net positive and anabolically net negative and at this point your body can decide what it will utilize to energize your body because you're at a caloric deficit. When you're losing weight, it doesn't matter. You have to be at a caloric deficit. Now, in which state do you want your body? In a state where it protects muscle or in a state where it can utilize both muscle and fat as aggressively as it wants just to fulfill that energy balance. You would rather protect muscle. And this is where the confusion comes because protein synthesis helps you build muscle and meal frequency helps you do that. A lot of people overly simplify this and say, well, okay, well, because this helps you build muscle, then automatically this must help you protect muscle and your body doesn't work that way. You're automatically catabolic. You're automatically going to not be anabolic. So now other hormonal elements can come into play to assist muscle retention. And all the studies that are out there, even the ones that do analysis on other studies, the 16 clinical trials, the resistance trained males, the OMAD studies, they all show that intermittent fasting is the best for protecting muscle, for muscle retention while focusing more on the body fat loss. It protects muscle better than meal frequency. That does not protect muscle because intermittent fasting has elements of it within the hormonal aspect, the insulin sensitivity, the increase in the HGH, the reduction in oxidative stress. These things happen through the intermittent fasting process. Thus, it helps protect muscle and helps focus your body more on burning body fat. So understand the nuance of protein synthesis. Protein synthesis needs amino acids at a consistent clip to be positive. Protein synthesis helps you be net anabolic throughout the day, but you are going to go through waves of anabolism and catabolism throughout the day. You're just hoping that anabolically you can do things throughout the day to be net positive in that respect. But if you are losing weight, catabolically you will be net positive at the end of the day no matter what you do although you have moments of being anabolic and moments of being catabolic catabolism will be the net positive so meal frequency then loses its value when you're not trying to build muscle because you will still be catabolic at the end of the day where intermittent fasting shines is that when you're in that catabolic state it can help protect muscle better than eating all the time throughout the day so please don't get confused by people who are trying to put out a blanket statement yes you are always in moments of losing muscle and building muscle losing muscle and building muscle and if you want to grow muscle visually overall you have to be anabolic and you have to have more days where anabolically you are plus you are positive in that versus being catabolic so intermittent fasting may not be the most optimal for building muscle but when you are losing weight a negative energy balance is the biggest determining factor if you're going to be anabolic or catabolic throughout the day. And because you're going to be catabolic, the better option is to retain the muscle that you've built as opposed to giving your body free range to use both muscle or body fat. When you flip that coin over and now you're trying to lose weight, things change. So simply put, is intermittent fasting the best for building muscle? We don't have many studies on this, but because of the different elements that take place in creating protein synthesis, it looks like intermittent fasting might not be the best for building muscle. But can you do it? Yes. Is it optimal? Probably not. Now, if you look at losing weight, is intermittent fasting the best for 
retaining the muscle that you build when losing weight, when trying to focus on body fat. The studies that we have out there have concluded multiple times through different analysis, through clinical trials, through different individual studies that yes, intermittent fasting reduces body fat more effectively and retains muscle more effectively than just caloric restriction. So I hope this video clears it up for you guys. I've been seeing a lot of videos coming out talking about protein synthesis and oversimplifying it and throwing that blanket over the entire process of protein synthesis. And I wanted to go ahead and break it down further so that you clearly understand what the benefits are of intermittent fasting in regards to muscle and understand that this full process, this whole process of building muscle, retaining muscle is not as simple as they're trying to make it seem. And I wanna thank my patrons for my Patreon and I'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here. As always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!